There was once a king called Midas, who loved gold more than anything in the world. Each day, he spent hour after hour in his treasure house, running his hands through the sacks of gold coins, admiring his golden jars and statues, and holding up his golden jewellery to the light to watch it gleam and shine. Midas thought that the precious metal was much more delightful colour than the emerald green of the grass or the sapphire blue of the sea. He thought it was far more beautiful than the gold of waving fields of wheat, the gold of his wife's hair, and even the gold of sunshine. The king once helped the god Dionysus, who said, Let me repay you for your kindness by granting you a wish. Now, think hard, make it something good, whatever you like, I'll give it to you. And Midas knew exactly what he wanted. I wish for everything I touch to turn to gold, he declared. Are you sure about that? Dionysus asked. Are you very, very sure? What could be better? cried Midas. Very well then, sighed the god. It is done. Midas couldn't wait to try out his new powers. He hurried over to a tree and snapped off a twig. It immediately grew heavy and bright. It had turned to solid gold. Joyfully, Midas rushed around, touching everything in his royal garden. Soon the apples that hung on the tree were golden baubles, the flowers were hardened into gold sculptures, and even the grass solidified into a gold pavement. How wonderful, laughed Midas, now for my palace, and he picked up his robes and ran inside. By the time Midas reached the cool of his great chamber, his clothes had stiffened into a fabric woven from pure gold thread. The weight of his golden clothes were dragging him down, slowing him and making his shoulders ache. Still, thought Midas, that's a minor bother compared to how beautiful his robes now look. He set off through the halls and corridors, touching everything, until everything glowed gold. As it was hungry and thirsty work, Midas sank into one of his new golden chairs in his golden dining hall, and called for his servants to bring him lunch. Midas said to himself, I don't know any other king who is rich enough to eat off gold plates, and he touched every serving dish and bowl and saw them gleam. Amazing, Midas said, and, licking his lips, he reached for a juicy chicken leg, biting down on hard metal and breaking a tooth. He reached for a goblet of wine and took a gulp. Unfortunately, Midas roared as a mouthful of gold got stuck in his throat. The king pushed back his chair, spitting out the hunk of treasure. Suddenly, he realised what the god Dionysus had been trying to warn him about. I'm going to have a whole kingdom full of gold, but I'm not going to be able to eat or drink anything. Midas howled with misery, and huge tears began to stream from his eyes. I would gladly give away every piece of gold that I own to have this curse lifted, he wailed. How foolish I have been. There must be some way to take back my wish. Desperately trying not to touch anything else, Midas hurried back to Dionysus and begged him to undo his magic. Go and wash in the river, the god instructed him. And, as soon as the king had done so, he was hugely relieved to find that his golden touch was gone. All the things Midas had turned to gold were back to normal. After that, if the king had had his way, he would never have looked at another piece of gold for as long as he lived. But the god Dionysus turned the sandy bed of the river to gold forevermore, so that every time Midas walked along its bank, he would remember his greedy mistake.